It's April 18th, 2022. This is Rook. He is simply one of the most outstanding vocalists in the world today, an acclaimed and beloved Iranian traditional singer known for his cross-cultural perspective and approach to music. Ali Reza Qurbani is the new generation of Persian classical music, but has already become legendary in Iran for his heart-stopping live performances and popular albums. He was the voice of Iran's national orchestra for 10 years and is now the first Iranian classical music star to release an NFT. He is our special feature guest from from Tehran for one of his first ever interviews in English. It's the second anniversary of the launch of our show. This is Conversations from, to, and about the Iranian diaspora. I'm Gian Gomeshi. This is Rook. Hi there, welcome to episode 175 of Rook. Hope you're keeping well wherever you're tuning in from around the world. Hello to you from Toronto, Canada. Salam, Dustan Aziz, Durud, Bashama. Shaya, I was thinking about Ali Reza Qurbani. Okay. I can't, I really can't think of a singer in the world, like all the great Western singers. I'm not sure if I can think of a singer who's better than him. You know, in terms of yeah. his his raw abilities and talents. I mean, I guess Homayan Shajarian, his uh, yes. counterpart. But I mean, I, I you know, and Nusrat is dead. Yeah. You know, so yeah, Pavarotti is dead. Pavarotti is dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Beyonce is still alive. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, really, I don't. I don't. No, I, who who can we think of? I mean, uh, among like the international singers. So I don't know. You have to say, mm -hmm. but among Iranian. Homayun actually he's he's good but he's the son of Shajarian you know so mm -hmm. he has to be good but Ali Reza he like uh, he he built himself and he's mm. amazing yeah yeah he's I mean you know he's that instrument his voice is yeah. is just a remarkable thing I and love him. Uh, and I'm so thrilled that he's uh, we've been working on this for a while mm. this there was negotiations going <laughs> on for. Yeah. For months and and we well, we've got them and uh, excited to talk we're gonna do this interview we're gonna try and do most of it in English but it'll probably be in Persian and English and we'll do uh, subtitles for the whole thing and yeah. and um, uh, yeah I, I just can't think of I mean there's great opera singers obviously yes. uh, but what he does I don't know you know I mean it's also a certain style of singing it's mm -hmm. it's not really fair to compare you know, I yeah. mean, uh, uh, I mean, Bono's got a good voice, but uh, <laughs> it's a it's a rock voice, you know, or something. Yeah. But yeah, because I was thinking, Ali Reza Gourmani could probably do Freddie Mercury, mm. but I don't know if Freddie Mercury Very could do Ali Reza Gourmani. Oh, that's true. Interesting. Uh, no, he cannot. Freddie cannot do Ali Reza Gourmani because <laughs> no, because about the Tahrir, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. What's Fre uh, Freddie Mercury's real name? Farhad or something? Farouk. Farouk, yeah. Farouk. Farouk. Um, Ali Reza Gourmani recently had some border issues. Oh, yeah. He was trying to come to the States to do a Nowruz show mm -hmm. and got stopped because of army service. There's this weird rule yeah. that it just, it's just, I get where the rule comes from, but it's misapplied because uh, it's preventing so many Iranians from getting into the United States based on, you know, mandatory military service in Iran that they had no choice to, to do. Um, so anyway, he couldn't get in mm -hmm. and couldn't do the show. I know he's been asked about that a lot. I'm not sure we'll get to that in the interview because I, I really want to cover his life and his instrument, like I say, his voice, uh, how he does what he does. Um, so we'll get to that. Hello to you, Captain Reza. Hello, sir. Hello, Gurvishaya. Hi, yes. And hello, the fabulous Keon. Hi, Gian. It is our yeah. second anniversary. Yeah. We launched on April 16th, 
2020. Wow. Reza was only 15 years old, <laughs> I believe, at the time. And now he's 80. <laughs> That's right. He I has look aged. Like 80. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look uh, like I'm 80. Yeah. Two years ago, we each, you know, each week I say we're on this uh, ongoing mission to build a new audiovisual encyclopedia of Iranian diaspora identity. But I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of what you guys, what we've all done with this encyclopedia and really thankful to the folks out there who have listened to us, who have interacted with us, who've made suggestions to us, who've subscribed, supported, and uh, even some have become patrons. Uh, thanks to all of you out there. It was kind of, you know, it was an audacious idea when we yeah. launched a Rook. Yeah. It, was a, it was an ambitious idea. And, and frankly, a lot of people, even people who wanted to be supportive, were like, um... So Iranian show, yeah. and you're going to speak in English, and you I, but know. you know what was cr what's interesting? The fact that we wanted to r launch Rook before, prior to COVID, there was no mm. COVID. Like we were, we were getting that's ready. That's correct. We, we were, were planning, planning it for a few, yeah, for almost a year. Well, exactly. I, I, actually, I had the worked on the idea for about two or three years before we launched. When in did it start exactly? The idea of Rook. When did it start? Uh, I literally, uh, you know, went around. Uh, uh, Canada and the U.S. asking people ideas about whether they would be interested in this kind mm. of program in 2019. Mm. Oh wow! Okay. So, uh, so or 2018, 2018, um, and then we were developing it, uh, yep. as you know, Reza, yep. for all of uh, 2019, thinking of you know what's the best way to do this, what, the, what who are the kind of guests we would mm. want, um, long form interviews, what's the what are the best platforms, right. and because um, we wanted to do something that you know yeah. uh, can be entertaining but has substance yeah. and there were there were a lot of roadblocks in terms yeah. of people thinking because it, it's it's a it's a new idea mm -hmm. first of all this kind of digital network in the Persian community but specifically in English doing content that's reflecting the diaspora mm, well done also, took him two years to learn <laughs> that yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on the second so anniversary so I'm a good boy <laughs> that's a <laughs> diaspora Hamas <laughs> 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 So let me give you guys some stats of Ooh, uh, how well, we've done. We like stats, we right? We love them. Drum right. roll, drum stats roll. time. Oh no. Two, uh, thank you, <laughs> Captain Reza. Uh, 2.9 million streams wow. of our mm. programs wow. in the last uh, two years. Uh, if you had told me mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, would you be happy with 2.9 million streams? I would say yes, I will be happy with that. Uh, we've done over 200 episodes, if you include our Contemporary History of Iran and Unmarried Persian Girls. We've, we're in over 200 countries. We have over 30,000 subscribers across all of our programs and platforms. And over 30% of our audience is in Iran. Wow, which that's we, something. I always knew we would have an audience in Canada mm -hmm. and the U.S., and it was nice to see, oh, wow, our number five city is Sydney, Australia, yeah. or these places around the world, Germany and and uh, U.K., and where, where our audience has grown. But I, I really didn't anticipate that uh, a show that's predominantly in English mm -hmm. would take off in, and first, it, for many months, it was we were seeing it Tehran in our analytics that there's a lot of people subscribing and listening in Tehran, but now Tabriz and Mashhad Amazing. and Shiraz, nice. uh, and so that's that's pretty yeah, exciting that's stuff. Yes. That's yeah. very nice, yeah. So I have a question for the three of you. Sure. Uh, which, when I say it's the two-year anniversary of Rook, uh, what episode was one that you hold close to your heart or what what character or person who came on the show what interview mm -hmm. what moment Psycho <laughs> for me Psycho <laughs> like, <laughs> like the moment you guys were blown away when you found out <laughs> Beaver is Psycho Abi was Wait, you're being serious right I'm now? I'm serious. I'm not even joking. <laughs> That's your favorite moment of Rook. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. After all the hard work <laughs> yeah. and The intellectual interviews. interviews. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, for me, it was Saga Abi. He's all still 15. The, <laughs> he's not going to take it back. <laughs> <laughs> all of that had to be done for that beautiful moment of Saga <laughs> Abi to shine. Actually, uh, Shia just told me another one. Um, what was that? Because we were looking at pictures of Ali Reza Qurbani, and there's one where he was in a concert. <laughs> he was singing, <laughs> and he's wearing a shirt. And yeah. what did you say, Shia? Oh, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's another saga obby. Get ready for this, Keon. Yeah. No, the kind, there is a kind of a shirt that has a Persian uh, traditional, traditional like uh, pattern. Yeah, yeah. So they call it Lebas Concerti. <laughs> <laughs> you wear this to the concert, <laughs> honey. Could you get my Lebas Concerti for the? It's, it's easy for the Radiohead show tonight. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, is it Le Bois Concerti for the person going as well or going just the person stage. on stage? On stage. Oh. On stage. Yeah, so you don't wear a Le, Le Bois co- uh, Concerti to see a, a show? Um, no, but but if you really wants to show your like, I, I, yeah, I'm, I, I love my culture, I love my Persian pattern, maybe you would wear, you wear Le, Le Bois, uh, which translates to c- concert clothing. <laughs> It's good though. It's so easy. categorized. <laughs> it's I love so it. funny that we have dates. Yeah, uh, I'm so pro it. Yeah. Uh, hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you going to the Jay Z concert? <laughs> I've got my Lebos concert <laughs> tee. No, 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 no. You say I have my Jay Z concert clothing. That's what you say because every okay. concert is different. You ruined so it. Key Thanks a lot, Reza. <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus. What else laughs> <is it? laughs> Uh, well, let me great, tell you, it was my, a great moment. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Reza, really, for your favorite moment on, <laughs> on Rook in two <laughs> it was, years. It was a really good <laughs> moment. A moment that required <laughs> <laughs> no research or <laughs> preparation. <laughs> What research? You think I'm gonna go listen to all the episodes and try to figure out? What <laughs> <laughs> the director of the show, oh, Captain Reza, the captain. The loose word around here. <laughs> yes, yes. Really. yes, please, Keon. Please bring some uh, order to well, this. Well, so. one episode comes to mind. It was episode 171. It was uh, Razor oh, Ali. Recently. Oh, yeah, the boxer. His oh. story. Listen, if uh, I'm talking to the audience, if you haven't listened to this man's story, just please do me a favor and listen. It's just. So it's a movie, mm. you know, f- um, yeah. struggling with a father who's a drug addict who tried to sell him off and poverty and gangs and, you know, almost getting killed to d- go against all odds to become a yeah. champion, basically, in the boxing world. Yeah. It's just or at least an upcoming an star. Upcoming star. In, in and I, I'm, yeah. I'm keeping an eye out for him because he's just uh, he's also Ali Reza, right? Yes. Yeah. Ali Reza and. What's his last name? It's, it's mm. also with a G. It's Ali Reza. Ali Reza. Ghadiri. Yeah, Reza yeah, yeah. Razor, <laughs> known as Razor, better known as Razor, Razor Ali. <laughs> Actually, that episode made me get into not boxing, but kickboxing. I heard really? it was a really good workout. Let me tell you, Gian, if you want a good workout, go to kickboxing. It's uh. just... Incredible. Are you still Oof. doing the intermittent fasting? I am. Actually. And the kickboxing. And the kickboxing. You're going to waste away. And the gym. Yeah. Well, <laughs> wow. I'll just wow. Be a, and I, in my head, I'm telling myself I'm a UFC fighter when I'm in training. It's Razor great. Alley. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about you, Shia? So far, we have a great episode from Keon <laughs> and a joke that Reza likes. <laughs> no, that <laughs> episode was good. It was a good episode. <laughs> Actually, I I do when I think of one of my favorite episodes, it's uh, Shah Rukh Moshkin Kalam. Uh, but part of it is because it has the Oogie, my dog getting uh, sprayed by the skunk oh, story. Oh, that, skunk that's story. one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was a good. One. Uh, yes, Shah. Uh, it's hard to like uh, point out one episode or one person. So I, if I may, I would say that. I love two series. One Pink Floyd. Oh yeah. One contemporary story of Iran mm. that we are doing. The whole series. The whole series. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So those are really I'm proud of, wow. and yeah, and also Farid Zolan. Ah. <laughs> well, Farid oh, Zolan, you Zolan, you did I a great that, you did yeah. great work on Farid Zolan. No, I mean the yes. the concept of like like consum, con, 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 Cons- Compensation. Com- yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's really. Le bas concerti. <laughs> Le bas concerti. <laughs> yeah, it's really important. I mean, the, yeah. the idea. Uh, well, thank you um, uh, to uh, again to the audience. It's been um, two years, and we're just getting started. I mean, it's uh, it's really been about incubating and growing this idea. And uh, I agree with you, actually, Shia. Uh, of all the things that we're doing, the contemporary history of Iran is very yeah. close to my heart too. And I've just learned so much yes. researching for that series as we've done all the episodes. And and um, I also think Sagabi was a. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks, Gian. Means a lot. Uh, actually, if I think of the funniest mm-hmm. moment, yes. if I were to say funniest moment, it would be Kiam was doing a great series called uh, It's All Persian to Us. <laughs> and the one where the oh, Persians, it, 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 do you know which one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah. all know which one it is. <laughs> the Persians are fighting the Egyptians. Oh, <laughs> with the cats. 
<laughs> they were swinging cats <laughs> or something, <laughs> right? They're, they're attacking the deer. <laughs> just from they were swinging <laughs> cats at In them. our high heels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'll take We're it fighting back. the that Egyptians. Is my that Stranger is my than fiction, man. <laughs> I, I <laughs> think I've listened <laughs> back to that a few times because we have to find out what episode that is. That should be taught at comedy school. That was a very, very funny episode. What a nugget of treasure. And you were selling this to us as history. I mean, it's history. All right, yeah. It's in the book. The Persians travel to Egypt you with cats. Selling it to us. <laughs> Throw the cats at the at yeah. the Egyptians, who then run away. <laughs> Man, it's, it's my favorite story. It's like they uh, it's it, a yeah. godly figure to them. The cats. They can't possibly yeah. harm cats, so it's hey. brilliant, really brilliant. We took a army sack tactic. Of them and threw it and <laughs> <laughs> took over Egypt. <laughs> Uh, I think about I it. I love when, history. When I'm in Istanbul, you know how there's cats everywhere in Istanbul? <laughs> I always think about that. I think about like the throwing the cats at the Egyptians. <laughs> I'll get you, you Egyptian. <laughs> if, if you ever get into a fight with an Egyptian in Turkey, you know what to do. No, know. not anymore. Back in ancient times. This is ancient worked. times. Yeah. And also just the whole image because we'd done like <laughs> Persians invented high heels or something like yeah. the male f- ar- f- army was wearing high heels. Yeah. And yeah, male so male just army. like this like like interestingly <laughs> clothed uh, Iranian military <laughs> with cats. high heels and cats. And <laughs> it's just cats. fantastic. Oh. Man in high Who heels has this kind of history? I forgot about yeah. that. Thanks yeah. for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, we're coming to you on rookmedia.com. That is where you can check out all of our uh, 200 episodes. So all of what we've been doing for the last couple of years, all the episodes of Contemporary History of Iran, Unmarried Persian Girls, the Rook Funnies, the Rook Moments, they're all there at rookmedia.com, where you could also become a supporter and patron of our program. Just press the support us button. It means a lot to us. Let's get to our feature guest, and we'll see you guys on the other side. Uh, this voice you're about to hear, this magical voice, it can bring you to attention and to tears in just a few notes. It really is a treasure. And indeed, the singing voice of our feature guest today has become something of a source of national and international pride for Iranians. Take a listen to this. <laughs> There you go. The unmistakable sound of Ali Reza Qurbani. In this case, a little taste of Man Oshir Shashmat Shodam. I'm in love with your eyes. Uh, that's from the album of the same name from 2014, although that song was first heard on Iranian national television in 2007. You know, if you're a fan of traditional Persian music, you will know the distinctive talents and voice of my feature guest today. Ali Reza Qurbani is an acclaimed, beloved, and respected Iranian traditional vocalist known for his cross-cultural perspective on music. Ali Reza started by reciting the Quran from an early age and then took an interest in traditional Persian music. He started his first vocal lessons at the age of 12 and was under the supervision of the prominent Iranian vocal maestro Mohammad Reza Shajadiyan. Ali Reza was the vocalist of Iran's National Orchestra for 10 years and has released 19 albums in Iran and Europe until now. He has an intense interest in bringing Persian music to the world and bringing people of different cultures together. He's worked on several international and multicultural projects across the globe. The Voices and Bridges Project is an ongoing multilingual, multicultural collaboration between musicians from different parts of the world with Ali Reza as a lead singer. Some of Ali Reza's most well-known pieces are found in the soundtrack of Iranian TV series like Shabedahom, Madar Sefer 
Darje and Kimia. He has performed all over the world, and he did an epic 42 nights of concerts in Tehran alone two years ago. And he's just become the first Persian classical music star to make an NFT available in the metaverse. We'll get to all of that and his personal story. But right now, it is an honor to have Ali Reza Qurbani joining me from Tehran, Iran. Hello, sir. Hello to everybody, and special for you, Mr. Jian. I'm very glad to hear your voice and I can see you. Uh, I'm going to say hello to everybody can see me or maybe hear me. I'm so I'm so happy to have you on the show. We've been working on this for for months to get you on the program. خیلی خیلی خوشحال شدم. ما تصمیم گرفتیم که من I'll I'll ask some of the questions in English. من سوالا رو به انگلیسی میپرسم. شما هر جوری راحت هستین. However you feel comfortable in English or in Persian, uh, you will respond. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, Ali Reza, I mean, you've, uh, let me just start by saying you've, you've had a very busy couple of months of output. You launched this new NFT last month. You've just released a new collection of songs called Raza Vaz. I have this image of you as constantly working. <laughs> do you, do you get excited when you put out new music or recordings and take a breath, take some time to enjoy it? Or do you quickly move to your next project? Uh, you, you know, uh, for any any musician, music is the the main love. You know, um, every time I decided to release a new project or maybe a new concert, it's very exciting for me. And after any concert or release any album, I decided to uh, start my new project, maybe a new album or a single track, or maybe. Uh, organize a new concert or uh, maybe we have a concentration with a different project and uh, artistic events and we have to organize parallel together you know Sure, of course. I mean, there's no other way you could possibly be doing all of this. You're you're very prolific. You've got a lot of output, and I'm going to ask you about that later. Uh, before we get into your story, though, I just in the introduction there, I was mentioning these 42 nights you performed in Tehran. This was just before COVID in 2019. Um, yeah. What what comes to mind? I mean, tell me about this experience for you. 42 nights. As you know, um, my last project was uh, Sing with Me by Man Behar. The main composer of this project, Mr. Hassan Nasseri, and uh, some of our best friends, uh, we thinking about the, uh, how created a new project with the combination between the instrument, uh, acoustic instrument, and uh, some uh, uh, ambient music like uh, electronic music. And uh, we released uh, some of our tracks and single tracks and after we decided to uh release a new concert with a new project and we called the sing with me invited the people for uh, singing together uh, with the musician on stage and uh, in some tracks we uh, use from the some poetry that uh, they have uh, some very special message for the people <laughs> After we starting the first nights of the concert, we we saw that people um, have a very good comment for us, and they uh, wanted to come for concert and the concert nights uh, going and going and going yeah. until more than uh, four to five uh, nights concert. And after starting the COVID nineteen, our project was stopped and locked down. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's part of what I wanted to get to is just the epic nature of 
45 nights. Mm-hmm. As you say, you keep adding shows and they're sold out, they're sold out, they're sold out. I mean, um, yeah. when you were a kid, when you were a, t- a boy in Tehran, could you ever imagine that you'd be doing 45 concerts uh, in a row sold out in Tehran only to be stopped by a pandemic? Otherwise, it would keep going. Would you ever imagine that? Uh, uh, this is my dreams from when I was very young. I, uh, it was my dream going on, on stage for maybe more than three or four months in a, in a year. By the way, Ali Reza, your your English is great. I don't know why you no. there was this. You know, no, it really please. is. You keep to, we, no, we, we, I have I have too much of problem. You know, in it's not good. I know that. Well, I know <laughs> that the thing is, is that you're very, very sophisticated in Persian. So um, sometimes when I see, I've watched interviews with you in Persian, I said, "Name me It's 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 so it's so, you you speak so beautifully that it's difficult for me. So Thank I'm you. actually Thank thrilled you. that you're speaking uh, in English as well because that that helps me. But whatever you feel comfortable with, of course. Okay. Um, let, let's talk about. Maybe I sometimes sometimes I prefer I prefer to explain it in Farsi because it's very sometimes I have to speak Farsi anytime when we'll put the zirnivis. Okay. If you feel like you need to go okay. in Farsi, that's okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, let Let me ask you about the story. We talked about you and the dream you had as a kid. So the story is that you started vocal lessons when you were twelve years old in Iran. I'm curious when you knew that you had this. Uh, incredible gift as a voice. Was it clear to you and your family and those around you, even when you were a kid, that you had this talent? I think for all the professional singer, it's very clear. When uh, you're starting very young, for example, or six or seven or eight years old, everybody can uh, recognize recognize that you have a very special voice. And uh, for me, the same, the same, because uh, anytime I am singing and uh, copy some music and some vocal from the other musician, um, everybody in my family, uh, my friends say, oh, great. It's a very special sound and voice, you know. Who was the first person? Who was the first person to point myself, out? You know, the first person was myself and after maybe my mother. My mother, because my mom was very, very interesting that I would be a, a very professional singer. When I was uh, in the primary school, in the primary school, between the uh, eight, nine, or ten years old, every time I going to the line and queue, and uh, I sing in Quran, you know, in Quran, and after uh, some uh, tracks, and that we say we say uh, surut, and I was solist, hmm. and uh, every everybody clapping, and some of my friends and some of my family, you know, for example, uncle, aunt, you know, say. Please uh, uh, continue and practice very professional as going go to the class and uh, for the master and teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so you so let me guess at this straight. So you're at school because I know you you were trained to recite the Quran the Quran when you were growing yeah. up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you would do that and then you would sing and other kids would clap for you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and do you do you come from a family of singers? Was your mother a singer? Were you did you are there singers in your family? No, no. It's it's no. very it's quite ajib that like it's quite interesting that suddenly this this talent came out of you. You know, uh, I, I I didn't saw my my grandfather, uh, the the father of my my dad. But everybody told me that uh, his sound and his voice was very great and beautiful. Maybe I, I, yeah, I have a, the gene of my grandfather, or maybe some, <laughs> some, some family. 
You know, there's a story that um, you've told. I saw it in, in when I was researching. In one of the interviews you've done a, a while ago, you had mentioned uh, something that I thought was very interesting. Um, and that as somebody who I worked in music for years professionally, and I've never heard of this before, that you used to go to the mountains um, to help to train your voice. You went to ri- rivers yeah. or mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've said that singing in nature in nature helps you to hear the weakness in your voice and to build it. Can you explain that? It's very, it's very curious to me. I remember in my uh, in, in the, that period that I was um, uh, learning uh, from my teacher or my masters, uh, all the students of Iranian uh, vocal, uh, it was very normally that everybody uh, went to the uh, mountain and uh, there's a two very good benefit for uh, going to a mountain for practice. The first of all, uh, you, uh, your uh, lung, mm-hmm. yeah, your lung. Yeah. This, is, this is very this is very useful for uh, uh, for practice breathing, you know, and uh, like an athletic sport for for your lung. I would think it's harder. And- it's harder to breathe in the mountains. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. And the second thing, uh, when you singing in the nature, in the nature, your your voice is not very powerful because your voice is absorbed by the nature. to practice more the high uh, frequency uh, you practice more and more and your uh, your voice progress right so you, you that makes sense i guess also the advantage is you're not bothering any of your neighbors who live next door or something yeah exactly <laughs> exactly it's very it's a very good idea for it yeah um, but it's that's such an amazing story to me so how often would you go to the mountains to sing Sometimes uh, two or three times in a week, in per week, you know, every every time between two or maybe four or five hours, wow. very early morning sometimes, and wow. maybe afternoon. Wow. Yeah. And, and There's a very beautiful, beautiful mountain in the north of Tehran, Darake, Daraban, Tochal, you know, and everybody can go uh, for singing and maybe sport. Do you do you ever still do that, or are you that you wouldn't do that anymore now? No, no. Unfortunately, right now I'm very busy, and uh, I I have a um, good um, a good place for practice. I don't need to go. I, ju- I just to, like uh, I just like uh, the, I like the idea of a couple of people who are hiking on the mountain, and they see Ali Reza Gorbani is uh, is singing uh, on the mountain. Very, it was very normally <laughs> some, uh, some some people that uh, knows me knows me join to us and going to uh, you know walking and practice, and sometimes I'm singing for them. You know, this this thing about you having this talent when you were young and others recognizing it. Um, so you're a great singer. Uh, people, I mean, uh, folks start to understand this. You understand it yourself. I'm interested in how you gravitated towards the classical uh, music because you've become known as part of a, a new generation of Iranian singers yeah. of classical Persian music. Did you always gravitate towards sonati, towards classical? I mean, did you, exactly. was, was there ever a time when you thought, I'm going to sing Pink Floyd songs or, or or rock music or pop music? Uh, but you know, the, uh, when I was around uh, 14, 13, uh, it wasn't very good um, uh, condition for hearing different kind of the music. For example, the Pink Floyd or many of the classical music, you know, it was very limit, limit uh, choice. Sure. And I remember when I was very young, for example, the very big master of um, 
traditional and, and classical um, vocalists of Iran, Mr. Banan, Master Banan, Ola Hussein mm. Banan, it was great. Every time I I heard his voice, anything is my mind, is my soul is changing. Mm. I don't know who, how can I explain. You know, it was great for me, and uh, this is the main gravity and uh, in observe not observe. یک حالت شیدایی در من جاد میکرد هر قوان شاخه هم خونه جدا مانده من آسمانه تو چه رنگ است امروز آفتابی آقای بنان هم کارهای کلاسیک میخوندن با ارکیسترهای بزرگ و حتی با یک ساز آواز با یک ساز کاملا سنتی میخوندن و حتی با انسامل های ایرانی قطعاتی رو اجرا میکردن همه آنچه که ایشون میخوند من رو جذب میکرد و البته خب خودم هم به جهت ای که اینها رو دوست داشتم طبیعتا میرفتم به اون سمت were the people that the kids that you hung out with or your family were they all listening to مثلا بنان یه لحظه به من اجازه میدید من دخترم نخوابیده جان of course of course باش برو اونجا من کارم تماشا میاد میشه که بخوام I'm sorry نه no, okay. من معذرت میخوام که به دختر شما <laughs> این جا جاشو من گرفتم جا جا به جا شده اینجا این تخت شده I hope she's okay uh, you've, you've taken her okay. place um, نه میخواستم بپرسم که میخواستم بپرسم were there other family members uh, um, was classical music مثلا بنان popular in your family was it always getting played your uncles your mom, your mom etc or did you yourself go and find this and and learn that you loved it so much i, I think yes but uh, but it was very different for me everybody loved and liked the, the mr bannon and his repertoire you know but it was very great for me after mr bannon i loved the voice and style of the mr iraj Khajamiri, mm-hmm. Ustad. this kind of the voice is very special for me the technique you know the the level from the very high notes and very low uh, voice notes and very very good rhythm very good rhythm in uh, and meters and rhythm in uh, in the voice and when he's singing uh, everything was great for me and uh, all these um, you know, points uh, attract me جاز میکرد من رو به سمت خواندن و اینکه برم اون شیوه رو ادامه بدم So here you are, You're, this music is so inspiring you. You have this incredible talent. Your mom wants you to, is, is encouraging you, saying you can be a professional singer. But you end up studying biology in university. Yeah, uh, yeah in, <laughs> make, in National University. Try, yes, make, make sense of that for me. Why would you go and study biology if, you, if, if it was so clear to you your passion was music? Okay, it's very clear because um, I remember some of the Iranian people uh, told, okay, this is the best, the best choice. You have a course in university and beside your art, mm. you know, when, when I started, when I started the first grade of university, it was very clear for me. I don't continue uh, my course, but I, I, I wanted to keep this um, course beside my the main interesting that this is the music, you know. Mm. It was it was very normally in the, the community. I of, of course, and I, the part of the reason I wanted to point that out that you studied biology is that something we often talk about on this program is unfortunately, it, it, you know, um, based on the status of of. Uh, musicians and and music in Iran and then for Iranians outside of Iran a lot of parents 
don't encourage their 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 kids to to go into music or worry about their kids going into arts and music because what kind of a career can it have and and so you have people who are exhibiting incredible talent um, ending up going into engineering or the sciences and I, th I just think about if you had continued in biology the world would be robbed uh, Iranians would be robbed of Ali Reza Qobani <laughs> and your voice you know yeah yeah I think if you look looking to some very uh, uh, professional artists in the world um, sometimes they don't have any um, در این مطالعات دانشگاهی ندارن گاهی حتی تو هنر نه توی رشته های دیگه شغلی گاهی اوقات جاب شما یا توی اون جابی که تلنت میشید و باعث شکوفایی میشه و اون رشته تحصیلی که تو دانشگاه کردید هم متوقت نداره و آدم باید کنکاش بکنه چیزهای مختلف رو امتحان بکنه تا برسه به اون چیزی که درونش و روحش و وجودش اون رو میطلبه و به سمت خودش میکشه Absolutely. Certainly, if you can do your passion and find a career in it, you win. Zindagi khub az ke giri dil bari niku Ta furushi har do jahan bar yek ta emu Kande ash ash as o ruh as o jahan as Ruh ash amiz har do jahan as Chun negah ash yek u it seems like from the outside when you decide to go into music and go into singing professionally uh, or as your life things start to happen pretty quickly for you you become the solo vocalist of the national orchestra of iran by the time you're 27 years old what was that like for you to become this uh, solo vocalist at that young an age this this was very very special and good opportunity for me you know uh, because uh, in that period uh, i i went uh, to the uh, very big master mr tajvidi in his home and for learning some some very special things in music like a radif and singing something for him and he he told me very good things well, as like a teacher you know uh, mr tajbidi called uh, master uh, fakhridini and told me um, are you interested in going to the uh, national orchestra of iran and uh, be a, um, a soloist and lead vocal you know and i told you okay this is my dreams hmm. and after after he organized with the mr uh, um, dear fakhridini and I went to the uh, orchestra and it was great. Well, it sounds like it was great, but were you uh, were you always confident or were you a little bit scared as well? The scale, the scale was very normal for everybody, but uh, I have a, I have a, a um, confidence. Yes. yes. I had a confidence and um, for the first time when uh, starting uh, before the concert because everybody uh, going to the orchestra before before you present yourself uh, you have to do something like uh, exam and quiz you know for the first time okay mr fakhredini invited me on stage and um, i i perform three pieces and okay this is very normal and traditional of the um, orchestra everybody with the with the bow you know um they're, they're uh, on their, on, yeah on their stand they were yeah. clapping for you yeah uh -huh. i want to actually play a, a piece of music from from that era this would mean a, a couple of years few years into your your time at the national orchestra of iran let me just play a little taste of this <laughs> Oh, 
taste of a piece called Tasnif by Orchestra. That's from the year 2000, an album uh, called Enthusiasm, and that's uh, Ali Reza Qurbani with the National Orchestra of Iran. Um, what, what do you think of when you hear that song now? I love these pieces. I love these pieces because this is the first piece um, that belonged to Mr. The composer is Mr. Fakhreddini and Ali. Uh, the poetry of uh, these pieces is uh, Fakhreddin Iraqi, I uh, performed uh, these pieces and I love it. Very good memorable for me. I love it. Can you put into words, can you describe either in English or in Persian, why you love singing? What is it that you love about singing? Oh, if I want to explain in English, I think this is very complicated and very difficult. فارسی بگه. خواندن یک چیز درونی و ذاتی است که تقریبا برای همه افراد در تمام سطوح جامعه و در تمام دنیا یک درایش و جذابیتی داره اجراش کما اینکه شما از ابتدایی که در مهد هستید یعنی مهد و دامن مادر هستید مادر با زبان خودش برای شما میخانه و این توی وجود شما به عنوان یک خانش و یک موسیقی شکل میگیره و این برای شما یک یادگاری به وجود میاره که این باعث آرامش شما میشه خواندن مادر برای فرزند همیشه یادمون باشه باعث آرامش فرزند میشه گاهی چو مهر مادری با جان خود می پروری گاهی چونان قهر پدر از حیبتی سرشار تو گاهی به نام میهنم کو کرده با جان و تنم سبز و سپید و من خاطرم هست از بسیاری از بزرگترین اساتید موسیقی ایرانی که تقریبا همشون هم مرحوم شدن سوال میکردم تقریبا تا اونجا که خاطرم هست همشون متفق القول میگفتن که هیچی مثل خانندگی آدم رو ارزا نمیکنه و حس آدم رو خالی نمیکنه و به شنونده یا خودش منتقل میکنه و باعث ارضا شدنش میکنه یه چیزیه که خب از اون برم کسی که علاقه ذاتیش بیشتر باشه بیشتر انرژی بذاره و به نظرش برسه که یک پتانسیل و استعدادی داره خب بیشتر میره به سراغش و باعث میشه که از جهانی که درش زندگی میکنه لذت بیشتری ببره با خواندن That's beautiful Ali Reza um, When you're singing you evoke a lot of emotion for your audience. I listen to you, I listen to your voice, and sometimes it brings tears to my eyes. Uh, do you feel that emotion when you're singing? Be honest here, the show is called Rook. <laughs> do you feel that exactly. emotion? Or do you are you thinking about technique and the, the notes and making sure that you sing correctly? You know, it depends. It depends to different condition on stage. Sometimes on stage you are very easy. You're very comfortable, you know, for example, you you know all the details on your mind and you don't need to look at your notes. You are very free and very light and you can you can fly. You, you, mm-hmm. This is very good uh, feeling. And in this condition, in this condition, you can you can exactly look at the eyes of your audience. And sometimes you can see, for example, some audience going very deep and shake uh, their heads. And sometimes some of the audience crying. And this is very good feedback for artists. And sometimes maybe your the feedback, you know, changing uh, your feeling. And sometimes you have to cry with the audience. This is very, very honestly, this is very good feedback for the other artists. Okay. This is exactly uh, depends to the different condition on the stage. Yeah. And how often has it been the case for you 
that um, you've become emotional uh, on stage while singing, that, that you've, for example, cried like the way your audience is? Not often it happens. I, I remember sometimes maybe, or I remember exactly three or four uh, times. One time it was very, very deep, you know, deep for me that one of our best friends uh, had to, had to immigrate from Iran to other countries. It was a bad, bad situation. And everybody, all the musicians on stage uh, performing and crying. Mm. And I remember when Master Fakhretini, his wife, uh, passed away. And after maybe uh, a few weeks, we had a concert. I went on, went on singing, and Mr. Fakhretini was conducting, okay? He was behind to me, you know? Uh, I hear something like a... <laughs> and from, from this side, I, I looked to Mr. Fakhretini. I, I saw that he's crying very, 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 you know, but tamam vujud. Hmm. خیال آمدن دیشبم به سر می زد نیامدی 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 که ببینی دلم چه پر می زد Uh, it was very, very bad situation for me because if I continue to uh, okay get the feedback from Mr. Fakhrit and crying, all the concert was going down, you know, and everything because because um, technically your nose is it close, and I have to okay. I don't want to uh, to listen and hear the sound of Mr. Fakhrit in um, you, you didn't want to hear the noise, but you must have felt moved that he was so moved while you were singing. I, I had a um, an opera coach once who was telling me that, you know, with Pavarotti, um, Pavarotti had the power to tra- transport people, you know, move people in this yeah. way. And if you yeah. looked at Pavarotti, you would see that he looked emotional himself. But this this opera coach that I had would always say, he's performing. In other words, Pavarotti is knows that his job is to move the audience, but he's yeah. he's thinking about the position he's in, keeping his back straight, moving his air, hitting the notes, and all of those things. Which, of course, after a while becomes natural to oh. him. But that's why I was I was curious to see whether you you feel the same way or not. Uh, for, honestly, yes. You know, I I remember exactly that I hear from the Mr. Nusrat Fatali Khan. Do you know Mr. Nusrat Fatali Khan? Oh, I love him, of course. Every, yeah, I, I love him. Uh, every time he he wants to sing, in, he say an order to the technical technical manager in the hall. Okay, please turn on the light on on um, the, uh, the hall. You know, because he wanted to see exactly, not very clear, but he wants to see the eyes of the audience. Because he wants to give back the uh, feedback and reaction of uh, uh, the audience, and after okay, he decided okay, how how can I how can I continue to singing? Very emotional, very uh, you know, very powerful, with a more power or maybe more oshagane um, tarbechune. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, uh, and and so I mean, you you ultimately you're you're technically you're an instrument and you're also a performer when you're doing that, and and um, your your music is very emotional. You talked about singing as being freeing and freedom, and and I loved your metaphor of flying. You know. Um, yeah. If you can explain this, if for someone who grew up in the West and doesn't necessarily understand um, Sonati Persian singing, it seems to me when I listen to you, and I've listened to you a lot now, that 
classical Persian singing can be liberating in a way. In other words, in even if some of the instrumentation is rigid in terms of the the notes they have to play, Persian sonati singing at times feels quite improvisational. You have to stay within the mode, but you are you are kind of dancing with your voice um, and the creativity is left to the singer. Is that is that correct or am I imagining that? I think this is correct. You know, um, I try to explain uh, in Farsi. در موسیقی مشرق زمین مثل موسیقی ایرانی موسیقی هندی حتی موسیقی مثلا قوالی پاکستان و جاهایی از این قبیل یه بخشی مهمی از آنچه که وکالیست به عهده داره به خصوص کسی که از مراحل پالا آموزش های ابتدایی گذشته و میزان تجربه و درکش از صحنه بالا رفته یه بخشی از موسیقیش موسیقی لحظه و ایمپروائزه که بر اساس اون بر اساس فیدبکی که از مخاطبش میگیره و حالی که تو اون لحظه درش سیر میکنه میاد حتی شعرش رو انتخاب میکنه الان شعرش عاشقانه است یا شی شعری که اندوه و قصه داره جریان داره تو اون فضایی که ایجاد میکنه ممکنه حتی از قبل تصمیم داره این شعر رو با این فضا اجرا بکنه ولی کافی تو مسیری که داره میاد یک چیزی یک خبری متأثرش بکنه همونجا تصمیم میگیره که در واقع نوع شعری که میخواد بخونه نوع فضایی که با اون موسیقیش میخواد اجرا بکنه تغییر بده و این البته یک مهارت بسیار خاصی رو میخواد که خب واقعا کار هر کسی نیست که از عهده اون کار به خوبی بر بیاد ای باغ وان ای باغ وان نامت خزان نامت خزان بر شاخ خواب یز درد دل بنگر نشان بنگر نشان بر شاخ برگز در دل دل بنگر نشان بنگر نشان این نکته که خیلی خیلی نکته های زهمیتی است که این نیازمند سالها آگاهی دانش و اجتهاد توی کار خودت داره که خب عرض کردم توی موسیقی مشرق زمین شمالی این کشوری که گفتم افرادی که بتونن به اون کمال این نقطه برسن معمولا بسیار بسیار اندک خواهند بود It's amazing. Me too. Nietzsche in that jazz album, so I say, man, because we we think of classical music. I always think classical music or sonati. The immediate thought is that it's very, very structured. You know, Western classical music. This is what you have to play, and you you better play it exactly. Otherwise, you're disrespecting, you know, Mozart or whatever. Um, but. It turns out that in Persian singing, at least in, the, at least in, in the classical music, it's quite free. It's quite freeing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say some example for you. I remember maybe 20 years ago, the master, big master, uh, Ali Asghar Bahari, had a concert in Tehran, Talar Wahdat, and uh, the printed the brochure and catalog, and uh, you can you can see okay the first part. improvisation in for example the mode of uh, dashti and the second part is daskahe humayun ya something like that and okay when he's starting everybody everybody that knows the musiri radifi daskahi and different the iranian and classical mode okay this is not the same as the in the wrote in the brochure and catalog and then in the Uh, uh, the break and pose um, s- s- some of the uh, very close people to master going to backstage and what's going on and he told them he told them okay I try to play for example Dashti in mood, da- mood of Dashti but any any time and if, if any time I playing and the bow movement I hear for example Bayat Turk Okay, what's going on? And 
I decided to continue the Bayat Turk. Hmm. This is very special, more uh, special example for uh, for say very clear to you. Yeah. Uh, you, how while we're talking about your singing, I want to I want to come back to your your albums and your NF, NFT and all that. But just while we're talking about your singing. Um, I, I'm curious how you keep your instrument going. I mean, on a daily basis, do you, your instrument being your voice, of course, do, how often do you practice? Do you still practice every day or, or can you give yourself a break to not do that? I, tr I try to practice every day. Sometimes uh, uh, depends to how can I do for the next. For example, I have to two or three uh, days later. I had a, a recording on, in on studio, and I I going to practice more and more. And I have, a, for example, I had a concert. Um, I increase my uh, practice more and more. And, but um, usually, I have a daily practice about my voice. But uh, Ali Reza, what do you do to preserve your voice? Because a lot of your singing, I mean, back to the mountains is is quite, you're hitting high notes, you're singing in a big way. Your voice is such a treasure. I remember Celine Dion, Celine Dion once saying that sometimes she doesn't speak at all during the day, especially if she has a concert, to preserve her voice. Do you, yeah. do you have these kinds of routines? Not exactly like this, but I know the, all the... Uh, um, the professional vocalist knows that the speaking is like a poison, poison for vocal, you know, or sometimes for somebody that recite the Quran, you know. Yes. This is very poisonous for the vocal. And when you have a concert or you have to go to the studio for a recording, okay, you have to limit it and decrease all the talking to other person because your throat should be very rest and very ready for singing and recording or maybe the concert yeah back to the national orchestra of iran you so you did that for 10 years uh and then yeah. you decide to move away from that why for two reasons the main reason was anytime okay the, after uh, the first year second year and third year and, and going on uh, uh, I was busy and busy more busy you know I had a different different in, uh, invitation from the different groups and different uh, composer for recording have a concert and uh, I was very busy more and more the, the main reason was that and after uh, after 10 years there was very very bad uh, situation and some very bad um, events like uh, you remember in uh, 1388 uh, yeah. happens in Iran yeah. after after president election yeah some some uh, artistic acti activities is stopped خنده های تو مرا باز از این فاصله کشت قهمه دوری تو قلب مرا بی گل کشت موج موهای بلند تو مرا قر نکرد حسم از سردی این بی خبری فر نکرد خنده های تو مرا باز از این فاصله کشت قهر نه دوری تو قلب مرا بی گل کشت موج موهای بلند تو مرا قر نکرد حسم از سردی این بی and after uh, the gap for one year, again, again, the National Orchestra uh, established and start and continue to the activity. And I was the, again, again, the lead vocalist of the uh, National Orchestra. When you talk about being busy, I mean, it's a good it's a good segue because I wanted to say, I mean, you are very very prolific. You've released about twenty albums uh, in the last you know twenty years in, in in Iran and in Europe. That's a remarkable pace, Ali Reza. I, I was trying to think of somebody your equivalent anywhere in the world who's put and I really couldn't think of very many that that would put out that kind of output even in just the last couple of years there are so many great songs you've recorded um I'm curious why are you a workaholic what 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 drives you to engage in this much output what is driving you this way 
Uh, I think the main reason is I, I love the music. I love the singing. I, I love to have a uh, connection with the audience and uh, my fans. You know, but is I I know that in the very very high level um, uh, society and the very famous artists is not very normally and usually you know, but uh, in Iran sometimes uh, I know that some of my friends have more than more than I think forty or fifty album. This is the p- different opinion of uh, anybody you know. Uh, I try. I try to uh, create the albums that I love it, and I. Uh, I'm sure that I can uh, have a good connection and good feeling with uh, audience. You know. But I'm not I am not sure that all the albums is successful or not. I try to have a very good connection with uh, our uh, our fans and our audience. The thing is, you are very successful. You are very very famous in Iran, and and amongst the Iranians so. around the world. Do you do you let me, let me ask you? I mean, honestly, if you think about it, do you like being famous? Do you like being a star? Anybody like it? <laughs> I I'm sure that I I want to very rock. You know, if if anybody say okay, I don't like it. I think I think this is lie, you know, <laughs> because when you decided when you decided going to the um, professional way and professional path in the artistic, you the first choice is okay. I want to um, perform and I want to show my art. Mm. You decided going on stage. Mm-hmm. You decided okay, present all the things. Not exactly your your um, art. Sometimes. You you have to show your clothes, your sh- shoes, and your, your your speaking, your lecture, and all the things. Yeah, you don't mind the pressure. You don't mind the gossip. You don't mind that everybody wants to know what you look like, what you're wearing, where you are. You don't you don't mind those things. No. <laughs> how how much no. of how much of a perfectionist are you when it comes to your recordings and performances? I'm curious, do you listen back, say your albums from 10, 15 years ago, do you listen back and enjoy hearing yourself or do you hear the mistakes and the yeah. things you could have done better? Sometimes sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes, okay, uh, I, for example, uh, that, uh, that piece uh, you, you, you played with Mr. Fakhreddin, I love it. Every time I listen to these pieces, okay, I love it. Or for example, I, I think some very famous TV series, for example, Man uh, Ashera Chashma mm-hmm. uh, The composer is Fardin Khaladbari, friend of mine, you know. I love it. Anytime I listen to this, okay, it's very good. From all the points, from the, the composing uh, about the uh, poetry, about the, the the story of the series, and all the points, you know. And sometimes when I come back to some uh, uh, my uh, old activities, for example, the single tracks or album, okay, I don't like it. If Right now, I decided to sing this, okay, or sometimes I denied it, or sometimes I uh, perform again with a the, with the good quality or maybe mm. different idea. If you don't like it, what's usually the reason why you don't like it in terms of your own performance? Sometimes about my technique, my techniques, and sometimes about the poetry that I perform. Mm. On sometimes, for example, I don't like my avas. Because this poem is not suitable for um, singing in this mode, mm. you know. 
You mentioned TV series. I want to play something now, and I hope this is one of the songs that you do like when you listen to, because it's my favorite of yours, so you'll forgive me. I had to play it. Um, it's it's fr- it's relatively recent, and it's from a video series called Ham Gona. I want to play a p- piece of a song I love called Chiale Chosh. Let's just play a little bit, and then we'll ask you your opinion of it. تو آه منی اشتباه منی چگونه هنوز از تو میگویم تو هم سفر نیم راه منی چگونه هنوز از تو میگویم پناه منی تکیگاه منی که زمزمت مانده در گوشم گناه منی بی گناه منی که بار غمت مانده بردوشم بحانه من بغز خانه من گرفته دلم گریه میخواهم خیال خوش عاشقانه من همیشه توی آخرین راهم بحانه Little taste of Chiale Chosh, Ali Reza Romani. So I hope that's one of the songs that we can listen to and still love, yes? Yeah, I love it. I love it. This is very popular right now uh, with the composing of uh, Mr. Ali Reza Afghari. This was very, very powerful uh, and very famous and very popular. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Ali Reza, how important is your music being associated with TV or movies or video series in Iran? That seems like it's been a big part of the the, the immense growth of your career. Uh, as you know, it's very important cooperation with the um, TV series, special, very good quality and very famous and popular TV series and the movie in the cinema. And uh, this is very good opportunity and very good um, platform for showing your your art and your music and increase your fan. It's interesting because it leads me to ask you about culture in Iran because you 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 know by being part of these popular series you've got this access to a popular audience and at the same time you've got one foot still in the the traditional and the 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 beautiful poetry and um and you've talked about your disappointment recently that um iranians in your view are less interested in literature less interested in deep content less interested in meaningful lyrics than they were in the past why do you believe that is the case when it comes to say persian literature uh, I think this is the the main problem. This is the global, you know, in all the countries in the world, the amount of interesting people to the literature, especially in the serious serious literature and uh, uh, poetry, is going down. And unfortunately, all the people going to the very um, superficial poets, superficial art, superficial media, you know. And and unfortunately, this is a global problem. But 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 wasn't that always true? I mean, wasn't that true when you know the pop music started becoming really popular in Iran in the sixties and seventies? Um, uh, that you know people would be less interested in the in this literature or the old old poetry. I mean, why do you feel like this is a a newer thing that this is uh, we're going backwards on? من اجازه میخوام که اینجا توضیح فارسی بدم اساسا هر آنچه که این کلیه یعنی برای همه جوامع بشری وجود داره که هر آنچه که مردم رو مجبور بکنه به یه مقدار تعمق بیشتر یه مقدار اندیشیدن بیشتر و موضوع یکی که می جد 
جدیتر بشه و نیازمند به یک آرامش و سکوتی باشه که شما در هنگام دیدن یک فیلم سینمایی در هنگام دیدن یک تئاتر در هنگام گوش کردن به موسیقی یا دیدن یک کنسرت شما مجبور باشید یک تمرکزی داشته باشید و فکر کنید و آنچه محتوا حالا در کنسرت گاهی خود موزیک گاهی شعر در تئاتر و همچه. هر چیزی که باعث بشه شما یه مقدار مجبور به اندیشیدن و تأمل و تعمق و تفکر بشید رو آدما امروز ازش فرار میکنن روزگار غریبی سوزنی من که بر در میکوبت شما انگام به کشتن چراغ آمده است نور را دنیا تو عرصه هنر میره به سمت مصرفگرایی به خاطر همینه که میبینید که بسیاری از آرتیست های پاپیولار در طی یک زمان کوتاهی میان به یه اقنایی میرسونن مخاطبینشون از سهرم دور میشن به جهت اینکه مصرف مصرفگرایی میشه همراه با تنوع یعنی هر روز یک زائقه و یک صدای جدیدی رو میطلبن ولی موقعی که یک هنری به صورت جدی عرضه میشه شما اون هنرمند رو فقط به تنهایی نمیبینید یا لباس پوشیدنش رو نمیبینید نگاه میکنید چه محتوایی برای شما داره اون محتواست که اون هنرمند رو اتفاقا جاودانه میکنه تا لح... آخرین لحظات عمرش خوراک شنیدن خوراک درک کردن به شما میده How do you in your own uh, journey in your own music Um, walk the line between respecting the traditions and the growing popularity and the growing popular nature of your music. You know, from the outside to look at you and how you've evolved, you would say, you know, you might say, okay, 20 years ago, Ali Reza Khorbani was doing quite traditional kind of music in, in a very um, small traditional vein and has grown and flowered in all kinds of ways, you know, cross-cultural collaborations, uh, the inc- inclusion of electronic music, Western sounds, singing with a, a duet with a woman, all these things that you weren't doing before. How do you see yourself walking that line, but at the same time being mindful that you don't want to Um, cheapen the 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 your your commitment to the literature and the poetry, etc. Uh, you know, this is very difficult because you have to, uh, if you want to, okay, create it, a new project. Uh, okay, you you should consider different kind of fans. For example, some of our fans uh, uh, was very uh, interesting to the exactly the traditional music. And sometimes some of fans very interesting to like a hangona. This is my opinion. I have to, I have to uh, create a different taste and different style for all the fans. If you like it, this is uh, exactly, it depends your idea. I like and I try to create a different kind of the project. For example, international project with the different artists in the world, around the world. And In the International Music Festival, I play with the other musician that all the musician in traditional music with a traditional instrument like a tar, kamanche, santur, and tombag, and something like that. Because we, we're going we're gonna to keep our n- national and classical music and traditional music and keep it and present to the other countries and other musicians. And sometimes I have to, I have to uh, attract the new generation, new generation of the people mm-hmm. that they, they need new feeding uh, artistic 
fitting uh, and you have to create a different taste different style of the music mm -hmm. for different category of uh, generation of the audience yeah I, I, I mean i i i understand that you're walking the line between um the different you i would imagine you do have a different audiences at this point uh, that come to you for all kinds of reasons. You talked about the international projects and one of them voices and bridges that you've been doing in it in the last uh, two or three years. I want to play a bit of a, of, of one of the songs from that project. This is released a few months ago featuring you and a female singer named Celia Woodsmith. This is a, a bit of nostalgia. Yeah. The wind sings of our nostalgia. The starry sky ignores our dreams Each snowflake is a tear That fails to trickle, trickle, trickle Fails to trickle Hey, Dari, what a gun is in the house What a gun is in the house What a gun is in the house چراغی ای افسود هر شب این دل هره تاغت سوز خوابم از دید در رو بود هر سهر چشم گشودم نگران چه خبر خواهد بود چه خبر خواهد Little Taste of Ali Reza Rubani. There you heard uh, featuring with Celia Woodsmith as part of this Voices and Bridges project. That's a piece called Nostalgia. Tell us a bit about the intention. But This is an amazing series that you've done. You singing with various people from around the world. Uh, tell me about the mission for this. The composer of this project, Mr. Uh, Ehsan Maturi, very good uh, friend of mine, that is composer and uh, central player. And uh, he wanted to create a, a bridge between different culture, between different uh, community and different countries and different language by uh, literature and poetry, um, exactly like a, the bridge between the different culture in different country and uh, use and invited to uh, from uh, some of the very famous uh, artists in around the world for example Celia Wooden Smith uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Bumai Jayshri from the India Faisal Nizami and uh, uh, some of uh, very famous uh, players players uh, uh, I don't remember exactly the name and some uh, vocalists from the um, Arab people and the Turkish people and uh, Spanish people and uh, it, uh, Michael Kelly, there's one with the, where you're doing Shakespeare lyrics. Uh, there, it's it's a very interesting project. How, when, I, I guess you're not in the studio with all of these people, huh? You record your part in Tehran, and they exactly. record yeah. because exactly in the middle of the we are exactly in the middle of uh, the coronavirus uh, situation, and everybody going to studio and uh, send for Mr. Uh, Esan Maturi and. Okay, mixing and mastering, and after release it. Ali Razajun, you've been so kind with your time. I'm, I'm, I've only got a couple of questions left. I'm mindful of your daughter. I feel so bad that we've taken her, her room. <laughs> so let me ask I, you I before I let you go. You are. I mentioned this in the introduction, and I, I have to ask you about it. You are the first classical musician or singer in Iran to release an NFT. Tell me about the decision to go into the metaverse space and what you are hoping to, I guess it's a part of a song and a video so far that you've released. Yeah. If people go to your site or your Instagram as, as an NFT, tell me about this. Yeah. همیشه از رویدادهایی که یه مقدار در واقع مدرن هستن استقبال کردم توی همه تاریخ و رزومه کاری خودم به همین دلیل هست من شاید توی هم نسلان خودم و حتی کسایی که از من شاید بزرگتر هم هستن یا کوچکتر که به صورت طبیعی اولین کسی بودم که اولین به این مفهومش عرض میکنم تا هم نسلای خودم که استقبال کردم از این که سریال تلویزیونی بخونم خب یه مقام اون موقع شرایط شرایطی بود که خیلی پسندیده نمیدونستن این کار چون یه سابقه قبلی هم داشت که یه ذهنیت بدی وجود داشت یا 
خواندن با آرتیست های مختلف یا اینکه سعی میکرد تو بعضی چیزا خیلی مقید به این نباشم که دست و پاری آرتیست رو بخواد ببند همکاری این که فرض که توی آنسامل ایرانی بخواد بعضی از سازهای غربی حضور داشته باشه چون یک نگاهی از قدیم وجود داشته باشه که این خلوص یا این توازنه توازن که یک دستی سازهای ایرانی از بین نره همیشه اعتقاد داشتم که بعضی از سازها میتونه اون صدادهی ارکستر رو یه مقدار تقویت کنه و اگر ایراد یا کمبودی داره اصلاح بکنه NFT هم جزو اون چیزایی بود که من از ابتدایی که شنیدم علاقه من شدم و از دوستانم اطلاعات بیشتری خواستم با من همراهی کردن پرانچه که به نظرم میرسید برای من قابل درک هست رو توضیح دادند و با یک تیم اجرایی یک تیم حقوقی که همه دوستان بسیار بسیار عزیز و نازنین من هستن هر کدومشون هم یک جای دنیا هستن تصمیم گرفتیم که یک بخشی از روزگار غریب و به صورت NFT منتشرش بکنیم true you're you really have been a pioneer in so many different ways in the in in the last 20 30 years um when it comes to iranian culture iranian music uh, and uh, uh, honestly i mean despite the fact that you're still quite young it's not hyperbole it's not inappropriate to say that you've gained this sort of legendary status Um, you know, when somebody's researching you, like I've been the, doing the last couple of weeks to prepare for this, everywhere they say, he, this is the guy following the footsteps of Maestro Shajarion. Um, how do you feel about that? من اول توضیح بدم که اون داستان NFT واقعیتش اینه که هنوز خیلی متوقف نشده. یعنی من تلاش دارم به با کمک دوستانمون در واقع این رو ادامه بدیم کارهای دیگه ای تو NFT بکنیم مراحل دیگه ای داره که این مقدار بلند مدت تر دارم بهش فکر میکنم در مورد آقای شجریان خب آقای شجریان به عنوان یک آرتیست یونیکی شناخته میشه که یک رپرتوار کاملا مشخص و البته درخشان داره که میتونه هم به عنوان یک مرجع و رفرنس برای بسیاری از کسایی که بعد از ایشون کار کردن مورد توجه قرار بگیره و البته به خصوص برای کسایی که تازه تو این مسیر گام برمی دارن خودش یک شاید دانشگاهی باشه که یک بخشی از اون اطلاعات رو فقط به تنهایی رپرتوار ایشون میده اگرچه ما رپرتوار بسیار متنوعی از بزرگترین اساتید داریم که خب خیلی هم خوشبختانه با این دنیای اطلاعات و کامپیوتر و این چیزا در دست از جوان ها قرار میگیره مسیر بسیار درخشانی رو برای خودشون طی کردن به نظر هم میرسه که هر آرتیستی وظیفه داره که مسیر خودش رو با ایده هایی که برای خودش ترسیم میکنه ادامه بده و از ایدهش در واقع حمایت بکنه و بتونه سر ایدهش بیسته به اون هدف و نقطه که میخواد برسه برسه و البته خب این که حتما باید نگاه مردمی داشته باشه و مخاطب داشته باشه بارتسی که مخاطب نداشته باشه معمولا نه همیشه به اون موفقیت دست نخواهد یافت و این که بتونی همه بخش های مختلف جامعه رو تا حدودی راضی نگه بداری کار بسیار سختیه که خب از عهده بسیار اندکی از آرتیست ها میتونه بر بیاد علی رضا شما فکر میکنید do you believe that you've made your masterpiece um, in the work you've already done or do you think that that is still ahead of you من فکر میکنم که حداقل تو موسیقی ایرانی و موسیقی که یه مقدار نیاز به پختگی داره نیاز به تجربه زیاد داره و به نیازه این میداره که با تعمق و تفکر بتونی هر روز ابعادی رو که در حد توانت هست جذب بکنی ماها توی یک شرایطی هستیم که تازه میشه گفت که مسیر رو 
به عواستش هم نرسیدیم یعنی باید تو این مسیر هر روز تجربه کسب بکنیم هر روز دانشمون رو ارتقا بدیم و بتونیم به این نقطه برسیم که هدفمون چیست من یکی از بزرگترین اهداف این هستش که بتونم بخش زیادی از جامعه رو با موسیقی ایرانی با اشکال خاص خودش یعنی که نه صرفا با اون اشکالی که همیشه ترسیم شده جذب بکنم نمیخوام بگم آشتی بدم شب رو آن کوگت آرند ره به سویت که این شب رو آن کوگت آرند ره به سویت تکسیز شم ارویت تکسیز شم ارویت آراد بر نباشد اکسیز شم ارویت آراد بر نباشد کار سختی است ولی بر حال هر کسی بایستی روی هدفش بیسته و براش طرحی رو ترسیم بکنه که بر اساس اون مسیر جلو بره و احتمالا داره تو بعضی از مسیر رو شکست بخوری به اون نتیجه که مطلوبت هست نرسی ولی هدف قایی من تو بخش موسیقی این هست It's been a great honor to get to talk to you. I hope we can do it again, and I hope we can do it in person next time, uh, either here or there, or Hajjik Misha. I, I want to uh, go out on a song. Uh, I mean, in and amongst all of what we've been talking about that you've been up to, you've also just released a collection, um, a, a three-song collection called Raz of Oz. Uh, and, and I want to play um, one of the pieces as we go out called Her Eyes, uh, a dash T. Um, do, you, do you want to tell us a little bit about this and, and then we'll, we'll go out listening to that? This is our, our newest uh, project that is very important for me and uh, from uh, one of my friends good friends, uh, Mr. Hassan Nasseri. Uh, the main idea about the Raza was uh, it belonged to uh, Hassan Nasseri. And uh, we decided after after uh, uh, talking about this project, we can create a project that, the, okay, the main elements and factor is of us, traditional uh, vocal, you know, mm-hmm. exactly based on the um, Radif Daskahi and uh, very, very pure, pure Iranian avas. And the ensemble or orchestras, exactly Western music. The harmonized and the ambient is based on the Western music. And for example, you, you can create it, you can send the uh, partiture, partiture of the music to any countries anywhere in the world and with the very big or small uh, orchestra performance and with the conductor performance and just the Iranian uh, vocalist singing the Persian Persian poetry with the pure Iranian of us, you know, and this is very good, a good idea that you can uh, develop and increase the Dastresi facility, I don't know. Mm-hmm. دسترسی آدم های مختلف در هر جای دنیا هستند بتونن با موسیقی آوازی ارتباط برقرار کنند. I try, we tried, uh, created a new new project with the, the main آواز Iranian uh, vocal uh, آواز with the big or small or chamber music and very very western music and combination together. I hope that this is a good idea and I hope this is successful. We're going to play a little bit of it. Uh, Ali Reza, um, Khayli Mochakkaram, thank you so much for your uh, your storytelling, your wisdom, and the time You're you've welcome. taken. You're it, welcome. It was a great pleasure and I hope to see you soon. And thank you too, thank you too, and your colleague. And I try to uh, increase and progress my uh, English language for the next time. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing this great. Merci, merci. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Iranian classical music star, singer, and recording artist Ali Reza Qurbani. We reached Ali Reza in Tehran, Iran today. Totonegal. 
روح می کنی کار من آه کردن است ای به فدای چشم تو این چه نگاه کردن است همه بی تو کار من شکوه به ما کردن است روز ستاره تا سهر تیر به آه کردن Taste of Roz Avaz, her eyes. Ali Reza Gorbani. Microphone's back on for a groovy shaya. A fabulous Keon. Captain Reza. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Ali Reza Gorbani. Ali Reza Gorbani. You know what? I did not expect him to speak English oh, as much yeah, as he did. Yes. Uh, and I kept on saying to him, <laughs> you know, do you want to speak in Persian? Yeah. And... Uh, uh, good for him, man. Oh, yes, he yes. just soldiered right on in English, and he was great. Yeah, I, I I love him before, but now I really, you know, he's my idol. You know, I really love him. Well, what do, what, what uh, made you feel that way? So first of all, the English. I mean, this first of all, <laughs> speaking. No, really, because uh, he has the confidence to speak English, and I I, I really admire mm-hmm. uh, his confidence. It, he's a star. It would be easy for him to say, "No, yes. I'm going to do this in yes. the only language that I express myself yes. best I, in." And yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also, it shows that how he tries to be international, you know, mm. and he wants to break the. Um, the walls yes. around Persian traditional music and mm-hmm. introduce it to the you know uh, bigger audience. Yes. And yeah, I, I I really admire him. Yeah. It, it, when we were playing some of those songs, uh, that and you did a great job of intermixing those songs, Shia. Uh, the the um, I mean, some of his his material, as I've been listening to it in recent weeks, it's it's not. We call it Sonati. He's a classical singer, but it really sounds like pop, pop songs, yes. right? I mean, a, a soft pop yes, sort of. Yes, yes. L- like even this song, the the way that the chord changes is absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So is he? It, would he be considered a a crossover artist? Like, would there be? I mean, obviously they revere him in Iran, but would there be classical musicians who would think that he's gone? Too much in the pop direction of course yeah, yeah. I, i've heard a lot of things that like the rigid traditional musician mm. actually they would say oh you're going to f- you, you went, you went too, too far, far. Yeah, the, yeah 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 which, which actually that is the reason that i love him because again he wants to uh, push the b- b- boundaries boundaries, boundaries. Yeah. yeah 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 I loved some of those stories too. I mean, I said it in the interview, but the the, the singing in the mountain mm. thing—it's uh-huh. yeah. just so yeah. interesting to me, so yeah. fascinating. And I love the idea of like a couple of people just jogging by, and they're like, <laughs> yeah. "Ali Reza Gorbani is, yeah. is singing." Yeah. I, mean, I don't know how often if that happens. Nothing. But. This show encourages people to go uh, mountain, to the mountains, <laughs> the mountains <laughs> That's hiking right. and yeah. stuff. And if you're listening to this podcast on a mountain right now, <laughs> <laughs> tell us because uh, if you're it's very romantic. A free oh. concert of Ali Reza Gorbani. <laughs> What, 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 did, what did you feel, Keon? Uh, that really st- stood out to me. Uh, you know, I just, in my head, I was imagining beautiful Iranian mountains and just that voice. <laughs> Imagine b- coming across Getting that. Getting echoed, like, too. Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you, like, I would just want to stay there and maybe join it. <laughs> it's like, please, King, <laughs> you're ruining everything. <laughs> Evacuate this mountain immediately. Yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't know him, to be honest, but his voice is familiar. I've heard his voice in movies or somewhere. I've, 
I've heard it. It's uh You know, you know what I like stunning. about Kian's take is that she immediately whatever she likes, she wants to make it exclusive. She's like, "Wow." And if that was me, I would be like, "Get everyone, get out." It's just <laughs> me and the mountain and Ali <laughs> <laughs> all This is our thing. You're ruining everything. Actually, on the mountain thing, yeah, can we because I I was like uh I think I was like, "Do you still go and sing in the mountains?" And <laughs> yeah, he, was like, he was like he was like I have a studio. <laughs> He's like, I'm a celebrity. Why are you asking me that question? But how romantic! Am I like, I don't know what is you know, uh, like. But I'm just imagining if yeah. he was dating someone and he just nice. starts singing in a mountaintop for her. And anyway, there, there's a famous <laughs> actually. There is a famous memory of Mr. Sajarian that he told that uh, he went to mountain and practiced uh, vocal and so hard he practiced that when he came back all his uh, diaphragm uh, would hurt oh, yeah. yes. wow. because actually practicing tahri like it's <laughs> not for sure it's <laughs> real <For sure>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get Wait, it do you, you right? sing in a band right Shaya? <laughs> <laughs> just making that no clear. I cannot do tahri <laughs> it's really hard yeah. you know, it's really but also you can't think of when he's talking about the mountains and uh, based on what he's talking about in terms of as an exercise this is not somewhere you're, it's not the yodeling where you hear <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, hear yeah. the echoes and everything oh, he's talking okay. about in, in the wind and in nature mm. The point is, is that there isn't any. It's really hard to sing to mm-hmm. to be heard, right? Mm-hmm. To be uh, like, yes, there's probably some valley, some place where you can, you know, your your echoed. your voice will get echoed. Yeah. But that's mm-hmm. not what he's. It's true that even talking, right? When you mm-hmm. go out and in in and you're you're somewhere where there's a lot of wind or there's a, there's a lot of um, uh, interference somehow. Mm-hmm. It's much more difficult than in a quiet room or in a studio. So mm-hmm. he's saying to build that that strength. What did you think, Reza? What was your what was your feeling listening back to that? Jealousy, pure jealousy <laughs> and envy mm-hmm. of this man's talent, and uh, and also not only talent but his like we can Farsi we say push the car, perseverance mm-hmm. and hard work. Mm. Like all this putting all this talent in, putting all this hours in with. Of course, he's going to be the best this country has to offer. I have a question: Has he ever been nominated for like a Grammy or something like Grammy? An international I don't think recognition? So. No, no, how no. do you like? How is he not in the Grammy? But here's the thing: you gotta, you gotta have for Grammys and stuff like that. People think you're just going to be awarded. Like you mm-hmm. gotta have an agent representation and be submitted. Mm. So some of these award shows, they have a, a prerequisite like festival that you're mm. going to have to have oh, either okay. like select being selected your projects or you as right. a singer. Because that other uh, who was it? It was the Persian um, music artist, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like he yeah. he got nominated yeah, again this year, so it just made me think: How come someone we like that? that, that we should do. Why don't we do this? Come up with a project, him? <laughs> yes, a collaboration. <laughs> I swear to God, like a single for Ali Reza Orbani, produced with Shaya, <laughs> Gian, sung with I Ali Reza Orbani, and work on it. Put campaign, like create a campaign around it. I'll help. I'll use all these resources. Mm-hmm. Submit to a Grammy. something. A Grammy well, he or he definitely is. Uh, internationally, he needs to be recognized yeah. more. Right. The other thing, actually, we we had a uh, we had an episode on the contemporary history of Iran with um, about the history of music. Yes, you know? yes, yes. Dr. Margaret Cannon. Yeah, yes. there is something here. Uh, f- two points. One in the mountain, actually. Mm. Like uh, yes. yes, you know it. It's a kind of tradition in Persian singing that you go to the mountain mm. and probably back in the time they would hear some cha cha of mm. bol bol oh. and uh, nightingale. Mm. And the other thing, actually, she talked about that how uh, like the mm, religious r- 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 religion and music got I- merged to each yes, yeah. yes. Mm. and so we see that Gorbani mm-hmm. started by reciting Quran same yes. as also Chajarian yeah. yes. So, yeah, so not unheard of in other religions too right. yeah, think yeah, of yeah, the yeah. Ch- Christian choir boys you know music. tend to be uh, g- you know yeah. learn yeah, or what, whatever yeah but but uh, or, or cantors rabbis mm-hmm. and in in mm-hmm. um, Jewish tradition but I, I think now does let me if you start off by singing the Quran and mm. uh, does it necessarily mean you are religious or mm. I don't know I don't want to yes, opine I'm about Ali Reza Ghorbani's mm. religion but is it is are you are you then from a religious kind of family of course yeah uh-huh. if, yeah if you 
going to like uh, learning how to recite Quran. Yes. But don't they teach that in school in general in Iran? No, not professionally. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. not professionally. As much as they teach French at school here, they teach like Arabic and Quran like in Iran. Mm-hmm. It's not mandatory. No, well, it is mandatory as much as... Uh, oh, it's like... Probably French is not a right one because it's not mandatory. Kian, can you explain what Reza is I saying? I have no now? idea. It's I a can't mandatory there, course, man. but even the uh. teacher who's teaching it to you doesn't know it. Let's put it that way. It's just for you to, loosely. you know. Loosely. Yeah, just loosely. to read the It's just a curriculum they yeah. got to put. There. I mean, the, the one thing that I'll say is it's still for Western ears. First of all, there's so much about what he does that's fascinating to me. Oh. Like the, the quarter tones, you know, oh, before oh, yeah, that's yeah. what you call them, right? Before when you go from one tone to yeah. another to, to a semitone, it's mm-hmm. the those in between notes that you have in Persian singing that mm. is just fascinating to me. Mm. But uh, also, you know, it's a genre, it's a style of music that we for, with, for Western ears it does tend to be generally quite dark it's mm-hmm. kind of sad mm-hmm. it's there, there isn't um i mean mm-hmm. I, I i can't think of it ali reza or yeah. song that's like an uppity ditty you know that's like it's a melancholic. Y- yeah it's so melancholic you, so you yeah. have to be in a certain mood to listen to yeah. this type of music well i said in the interview it makes me cry but mm-hmm. i mean I, i'm curious why that tradition why the tradition is is so steeped in you know, there's no like when the saints go marching <laughs> in, you know, yeah, there's yeah, no like yeah, yeah. uppity kind of, you know. Yeah. Honestly, actually, I think revolution has a big role in it, you know, because, for example, uh, before revolution, we like Mr. Sajarian yes. actually had some songs like it was shod? a sh- like Yeah, shot. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But after revolution, I mean, the traditional singers tend to be more sad and mm. like air funny spiritual music uh-huh. and yeah a interesting more somber yeah. and serious after yes. revolution huh? yeah. like would you it's it's hard to think of uh, i i appreciate his talent the beautiful beautiful voice and just the vi- like the background music incredible but I can't see myself like I've never been one to listen to traditional sonati Iranian music. It's mm. just doesn't connect on, it, the, it on, really the, on the way to the club. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like why would I listen to this? <laughs> and also, like I, I, you know, for me, I'm just imagining if I was somewhere where this type of music was playing for like over an hour. I would probably get a headache. I wow. hate to say this. Wow. I don't so know. So you're gonna I tell me you're not bumping some Shahram Naziri when you go I, no. disco dancing? <laughs> you do that. But, uh, but when you say this type of music, the one th- thing is, is that <laughs> I understand what you're saying in terms of some Persian classical music. I find Gorbani it's more romantic. Mm, a lot of yeah. his stuff. So I always have an that appetite last for that. Song, that last song uh, that we played after the interview, incredible, beautiful song. There's lots of songs um, like that, though. Right. I, I Actually, guess I just Gian need to be is right. He more. doesn't like that song. Like to me, like that, and like let's let's say Leonard Cohen's like famous Blue Raincoat. Let's got the same like like I wouldn't say like that's not a traditional song. It's just mm. a you know. Classic. Yeah, actually, Leonard Cohen's a good a good example. I mean, notwithstanding the fact that Leonard Cohen wasn't the singer like <laughs> Orbani. <laughs> Um, but uh, Leonard Cohen's a poet, but you know, but who's saying as well? But you're right in terms of the tone. Um, you're hard pressed to find a yeah. Leonard Cohen song that too. That's like a yes, a ditty, yes, like yes, a exactly. you know, mm. like, uh, a, a bundle of joy. You mm-hmm. know, it's but the, and romantic songs mm. are Still. are tend to the songs that move your heart tend to be a little more yeah downer. Hmm. Kian, actually, I have a question. When you say you don't listen to this Persian me- uh, traditional, me- it's hard for you to listen mm. to the. Uh, you know, it's really trendy right now that like they put Iran- Iranian tahri ha 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 on the deep house music. So, mm. ha- how's your relation with those kind of music? I, I've heard a few, and they they sound really fucking good. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So but that you like, would listen. To. I mean, I've been to. Um, not Shajarion, but there's another one who does that kind of sonati music. I, I've been to one of those concerts. Beautiful music, actually. To be honest, I was high. Kevin Calhoun. <laughs> no, there's another one. Uh, I, I'll, I won't remember the name right now. No, <laughs> and it sounds incredible. But uh, you know, it's like that cool thing that you go to once in a while. It's not mm. something I would want to be around all the yeah. time. You know. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Well, I'm very grateful to Ali Reza Gorbani oh. for coming on our show on our second anniversary. Last year, our first year anniversary show was uh, Farmaz oh, Aslani. Yeah. So we're two for two, I feel like. Uh, next year. 
I'm going to begin. <laughs> <laughs> Is High Day still alive? <laughs> Aww. Uh, would have been great. Way to stab we us should, in the heart. We right should now. do an episode. <laughs> we should do a special on High Day. He's full of ideas, yeah. eh? Yeah. <laughs> Are you <laughs> on some drugs <laughs> right now? <laughs> you, me, Shia, <laughs> and Perry son, we'll get, we'll submit the Grammys with the. Uh, <laughs> Bad ideas? <laughs> Bad ideas? No, no, no great no, ideas. No, no, no. Inspired great. ideas. Thank you very you much. are the ideas, man. Whatever you took it. this morning, keep doing it. Hey, <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice. It's, it's another episode. <laughs> As I'm putting on my sunglasses. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Reza, Groovy Shia, the fabulous Keon. Uh, thank the, uh, this is full time for Rook for today. Uh, thanks to the amazing team who put this show together and... Um, many of whom have been working on this for the last two years. Savvy Rohan. Thank you, brother. The talented Anakita. Ponta, the artist. Super Parisa. Ahai Marathon. Of course, Keon Reza and Shia that you just heard there. Uh, for all things Rook, for all of our episodes, for all of our material, you can go to our website, rookmedia.com. If you haven't subscribed on any of our platforms or all of them, you can do that. Please do. Become a supporter of Rook at rookmedia.com by pressing the support us button, funny enough. Find me on Instagram at giangomeshi. Thanks again for listening. See you Thursday. Mizumbashi. Mizumbashi.